Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley, and we've got a great, great special broadcast for you today. The heavens are shaking, and our guest today is Stephen Benoon. Stephen has absolutely got some incredible information to help us to understand some of these apocalyptic signs that are going on right now in the heavens. Scientists are scrambling to do either to bring an explanation to why the climate is changing all over the globe and these strange asteroids that are coming closer and closer to our planet. And of course, is there really a planet X, or some type of binary system that's causing the heavens to shake. Well, in this broadcast, we're going to literally bring out the evidence, the information, and the biblical ramifications of what's taking place in the last days. We'll be right back in just a moment. Don't move. Release from Cincinnati, a four-part DVD set on the end times. Planet X, Nibiru, the seas rising, the pole shift, Clyde Lewis, John Moore, Stephen Bendenoon, and myself bringing forth dynamic information relevant to the last day. You can get this four-part DVD set at my website or individually at my Patreon channel. The heavens are shaking. This is a must-see. Get it now. All right, all right. So glad you're back. Uh, it is a pleasure to have Stephen Bendenoon with me. Stephen, how you doing? Good to be with Thank you, Thank you Pastor for coming Paul. On. Very Thank good. you for being with us today. It's an honor to have you on the broadcast. Thank you. You know, I've known you a long time, and we met. Uh, we spent time in Israel together, in Jerusalem, and we went up on the Golan Heights together when things was a little bit more... Uh, tense. Tense would be a good word. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, you, uh, you know, we all over Jerusalem and all over Israel, and so we really got a good feel uh, about the Holy Land. I know you've been there many, many times. You lived there for a while. Yes. And you've lived in Europe and, and different places. And your uh, ministry is ex exploding on YouTube. You're doing a great job uh, with IsraeliNewsLive.org. Um, but we want to get in today about some of the things that are going on, Stephen. Uh, we just came out of that Cincinnati conference which was tremendous. It was. <clears throat> that was an incredible conference, Pastor Paul. I mean, you really brought together some exceptional, uh, exceptional people. We had, of course, John Moore. You had Clyde uh, as well from Ground Zero. And I really enjoyed it because I picked up on a lot of things that I don't know about uh, Nibiru, Planet X, and because uh, there's a lot of just information I, that's not my specialty. Uh, I just happened to stumble into this, uh, not intentionally, but because of uh, the memory stick that uh, you now have in your possession. And, yeah, it's, it's caused a firestorm, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, uh, so Stephen gets this memory stick, uh, this what we call the little green file, uh, which was given to you by a, uh, a scientist, astronomer, uh, working close with NASA and others, and uh, tremendous information on this. And you brought that out in your presentation in Cincinnati. Folks, what we're talking about is the Bible says that the heavens will be shaken. In Luke 21, 25, it says, For there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves will be roaring, and men's hearts will fail them for fear. For looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. But he said the, the heavens will be shaken. And so there's several things in the Bible that tells us uh, of all kinds of apocalyptic events and one of them is something you brought out I thought was so prophetic and so, uh, so important because it was from the actual Hebrew writing, and you've studied Hebrew. Yes. And here's what it is, folks. In Matthew 24, the Scripture says, um, Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, 
and the disciples come to him and they said, tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming, the end of the world? That's Matthew 24, 3. Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All these the beginning of sorrows. You know, Pastor Paul... Before we actually get into the Hebrew aspect of this, if you think about just even in the order you were reading this, okay. because a lot of times when we read scripture, we think that uh, you, you read a verse and you're expecting that bam, 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 all these things are going to happen just within a few days. But in some cases in scripture, like, for example, when Yeshua reads uh, Isaiah 61, Jesus, may, he goes to verse 1, half of verse 2, and now 2,000 years later, the other half of the verse is finally going to get fulfilled. So we know that it may not happen in that sequence of events. But then you have the kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation you have on here. But then there shall be famines, pestilence. And you had brought out in one of your broadcasts, it ended up making it on Sputnik, about the locust and there is some belief by those in the scientific community that this uh, binary system that's coming through, this, this planetary system, caused the events that happened there in the days of, of Noah, excuse me, uh, days of Moses with, uh, with all the pestilence and things right. that happened back then. So are we seeing a precursor? Uh, we know that Carlos Ferrada, the, the great uh, Chilean astronomer, uh, said that this this system would begin to affect the earth as early as 1999, but he didn't actually set the date for us in the interview that he gave. Um, and, and then, of course, and I come and I begin to look at this uh, scripture here in chapter uh, 24 of Matthew, and, of course, studying the Hebrew language, I've spent my, most of my life studying this from uh, all the way from college level, yeshiva, Etc. And even currently, again, enrolled in uh, J Jerusalem Hebrew University in Israel there, studying even deeper once again in the language. But the Hebrew Matthew, that's uh, Shem Tov is what they normally call the, the 18 fragments that were put together that the Jews have always held cl uh, close and dear to debate Christians with. When we go to the Hebrew Matthew in chapter 24, verse 7, it's very similar to what we have here. Uh, and the last part, though, is what really gets me. It's Vera'ash Bemachamot. And this here, now the Bemachamot is the different places, are, are, could be easily a global event. But the word right there, Vera'ash, which means it's a conjunction, the, the Ve is the end, but the Ra'ash is like a tremendous noise or a shaking or a, a tumultuous event. That can be on the ground, it could be a storm above wow. or it could be literally in the universe above your head the cosmos the cosmos itself so something so powerful that one event it's because it's a singular in oh. hebrew rash is singular okay but it affects a global event so in other words the word okay famines pestilence we understand those we'll talk about that locust in a minute but the earthquakes in diverse places doesn't necessarily mean a lot of small earthquakes or big earthquakes in different places of the planet, although that could happen, although that is happening. Yes. But it could be earthquakes on Earth, in the stratosphere, in the ionosphere, or up in the cosmos. You're saying that there's going to be quakes in space, quakes... Well the, on the earth the way we're actually looking at this is that it's a singular event one that affects big event multiple places okay so because ra'ash is used in hebrew as the word earthquake and throughout the the, the entire tanakh which is the acronym for the writings the the, the prophets in the torah uh the old testament we have the same word the ra'ash used for the word earthquake but it can also be a storm uh, it can be, like I said, a planetary event that affects the earth. I see. But this event, this one tumult tumultuous event that happens creates a global issue. I got it. So, yes, it could be multiple earthquakes. 
but it's because of one event. One event, but it could be also the sea rising. Right. It could be, uh, as the scripture tsunamis. says, uh, the sea is a roaring. It could be the tsunamis. It can be the water rising. It could be storms on the earth. It can be earthquakes. It could literally be all of those this things. This is huge, though, Stephen. Folks, now, and so the Hebrew, the original Hebrew is saying, because there's going to be an event or an earthquake, it's going to create earthquakes, tsunamis, extreme winds, uh, cosmic, who knows what all it will do. So there's some kind of an event that's going to happen. Right, because the way I see it when I look at this, Pastor Paul, is that as I'm looking at the word Rosh, my thought is it may not be what is happening on earth specifically, but it could be the binary system, the moving of this planet comet, as Carlos Ferrada, the astronomer from right. Chile, calls it. It could be when this is moving past that's what triggers the event, and that's the singular event that triggers the, the global event on the right. earth where we have the multitude of places right. here on the earth. So if and we're here on the we're earth, we're, we're seeing multiple things happening, beginning of sorrows here. Yes. We're seeing earthquakes, tsunamis. We're seeing multiple earthquakes. We're seeing all kinds of catastrophic, cataclysmic events that will include famines, pestilence, and different things, or these could be precursors leading up. We know that wars and rumors of wars are already going on. Yes. These are all in a, in a, before this event. And to kind of uh, confirm that, when you think about what Jesus said in Luke 21 that I just quoted a minute ago, is that there would be these signs in the sun, the moon, the stars. So it starts being noticed in the heavens. Now, Genesis 1.14 in the creation, the, the Lord said that he created the sun, the moon, the stars for signs and seasons for days and years. Now, signs would be prophetic signs or divine appointments, okay? And, uh, and then we've had the blood moons, and we've had the blood moon tetrads. We have the eclipses. We have a lot of signs. But what about great signs, fearful sights? That's also in Luke 21. Here's what it says, folks. In Luke 21, again, Jesus is asked the same question, just like he was in Matthew 24. And Stephen's on to something here because Jesus responds and says, Take heed, this is verse 8, Luke 21, 8, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by, all right? Then it says, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines, pestilences, fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Absolutely. Now, Pastor Paul, listen. Think, are you serious? So, I mean, think, I mean, <laughs> yes, think about some of the things that are, that are being spoken about here as you read, even from the book of Luke. If you notice the wars that are the nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, all the precursors before this event. Uh, and then, of course, as I said, you saw the, the, the locust, this, this locust yes. moving in. Now, let's go back to the war zone. Because when we were getting ready to come to the conference here uh, that you had put together, one of the things that I thought about is, okay, I'm not an astronomer, I'm not, I'm not a scientist, uh, I'm not a mathematician, I'm pretty good at math, but not like these guys are. And so I thought, okay, my expertise is global news, events, especially Middle East, things like that. Right. Uh, the Russian news is, as well, because my wife, she's not Russian, but she grew up in communism, she, she, she speaks Russian. And so as I was looking at this, I thought, what are the global events that could speak of this type of a coming event? And if you think about the nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and then we take into consideration, scientists believe that there will be a pole shift. Yes. Uh, and one of the things that really caught my attention, and it just, it came out in the news on RT just recently, Russia Today, and they were talking about how the United States and Russia are really at, at uh, odds over the northern Arctic water route there. Yes. Now, it's not, maybe not the correct name to call that there, but because it's nothing but a frozen North Pole block of ice. Now, submarines we know traverse underneath this all the time. They hunt one another uh, in their war games. 
But I'm thinking to myself, why would Russia and the United States, United States be so concerned over this northern sea route? I mean, why is everybody it, so... Yeah, it's why not is, a sea route. Yet, it's but, frozen. Right. And, and, and they're talking about, well, global warming is beginning to melt off right. the polar caps, etc. Well, a, truly, a pole shift would melt it down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pole shifts? What? Let me just say this. Stephen, you brought this out in that uh, great presentation in Cincinnati, along with John Moore and others. When we come back, we're going to talk about a pole shift. It's actually in the Bible, and we're going to let Stephen uh, help us understand it when we come back. Folks, uh, pay close attention. If you want to get the DVD of that Cincinnati conference, which was the absolute, the number one conference ever held on these subjects of these end times, you listen up, they'll tell you how to get it right now. Be right back. Released from Cincinnati, a four-part DVD set on the end times. Planet X, Nibiru, the seas rising, the pole shift, Clyde Lewis, John Moore, Stephen Bendenoon, and myself, bringing forth dynamic information relevant to the last day. You can get this four-part DVD set at my website or individually at my Patreon channel. The heavens are shaking. This is a must-see. Get it now. All right, all right. Welcome back, folks. I'm telling you, we are having an absolute incredible time here today. And our, our guest with us, Stephen Ben Danoon, is with us today. Stephen, again, I want to say thank you for being with thank us you. because that, that last segment has just got people turning. If, if some of you may not know, Stephen has a wonderful ministry called IsraeliNewsLive.org. He has a YouTube channel that's almost at 300,000 views. Uh, Stephen has studied in Christian college and universities as well as uh, studies in uh, rabbinical studies, at, even at Hebrew University. He's also a seven-year CIA agent, former CIA agent, and um, wow, a lot going on in your life, if I can say that. You've, uh, you've got a lot of contacts, don't you, in the intelligence, uh, some I, I of your do. contacts out there. Over the years, we've developed, I've developed a lot of contacts. I've stayed in touch with some, in fact, one, only one of the former colleagues, most of the colleagues that I had back then. Uh, because I was in from uh, 1983 to 1990, and of course a lot of them were much older, so they've either passed on, were killed, or uh, so on only one colleague I have left in the CIA, I uh, do have contacts with Mossad uh, as well. Right, and that, that's really great for you because that's why uh, Israeli News Live, you're able with, with your contacts with, with Mossad and those that are still, the, at least one or so at the CIA, and that's why you were able to get this uh, green file here, we'll call it, from that older gentleman, which we're not going to give his name. He wants to remain anonymous. He's an yes. older gentleman, uh, but he has tremendous information here for us from uh, leading scientists from NASA and others. Uh, it was put together to help us understand Planet X, Nibiru, to help us understand whatever you want to call it, a binary system. Uh, some, now they're calling it Planet Number 9, even the Goblin. What it is, folks, it is a large body that is apparently moving on the outskirts of our solar system that is shaking the heavens and causing waves of energy and causing asteroids and pulling on the, uh, on the planets, including Earth. And John Moore, who's also in that DVD that you can get from that Cincinnati conference, he explains, because he was uh, in Army Intelligence and he was in on the briefings in 1979, when they were explaining this to top-level army of uh, uh, rank of the coming pole shift and what that does to the sea and all those things. So you mentioned the pole shift, Stephen. Let me, let me read the one verse or two verses here. Isaiah 24, the Bible says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Verse 3, the land shall be utterly emptied, utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. So there's some, again, there's some type of event that's coming that looks like it's tied to the New Testament prophecies of Jesus and the book of Revelation. Your thoughts on this? <clears throat> there's definitely, from what we can under, or what I can see from the information I've seen on this uh, memory stick, and uh, of course, getting to talk to, to, to John as well was really a wealth of information. Uh, there's beliefs that the poles could shift uh, as much as 
between 28 to 45 degrees. Now, 45 degrees, anybody that does the math on that, which I can do the math on that one, we're talking about a 3,000 mile change. So, for example, if we're talking about 3,000 miles, we're talking about uh, Indiana right now uh, being the on North the, Pole? On the other side of the North Pole. What? <laughs> so, I mean, we, 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 well, it's cool. If things are, look, let's face it, climate change is happening to the planet. Now, there's the argument is what's causing it. We got those that see it as man-made climate change. That's what they really think and believe. And there might be a little bit of that happening with some of the pollution and stuff. And then we got the, the school of thought that there's no planet change at all. But that's kind of, we got to recognize there's some things happening on the Earth, some really weird extreme weather. So you're saying is, if there, we're seeing that the Bible says there's a pole shift coming. Okay, coming. I, I go to the Word, it, there it is. You're saying the reason is because this binary system that may have come by 3,600 years ago during the time of the plagues of Egypt. And folks, you mentioned the locusts. There's, I, I did a video about the locusts. Uh, that right now, Stephen, Iran, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, all over the Middle East, there's massive locusts, and it's 20 times more than anything they ever have ever seen headed toward the Red Sea area. I did a video on it, and it was just in the news. Uh, Sputnik in Russia covered it, several uh, RT. They had a television segment on it, and they said this preacher is saying that this locust could be a precursor to the end times. Well, we just read where Jesus says this is going to happen. So again, not, uh, help us understand what does this mean if the North Pole ships all the way to Indiana? Well, naturally, I mean, think about it, Pastor Paul. They, they talk about the elite circles reveal these things in movies. Hollywood is always speaking about things that are coming. And then you look at the, uh, the movie, The Day After Tomorrow. Uh, it's been, what, about 20, 25 years ago that came out. And oddly enough, John Moore spoke about that in the conference. I had had that in my PowerPoint already because... The, it, it just caught my attention. I, I started thinking about, well, if a pole shift is coming and it's over maybe a 60-day period that it takes for this all to, to transpire, then in reality, there's going to be a temporary freeze for some parts of the world, permanent for other parts, uh, but there's also that thawing of the Arctic Circle. And I think this is one reason why there is such a push for war uh, with Russia, uh, because we, we see from John Moore and the maps that he gives there, you know, the many millions and millions of people will die or be displaced as refugees. So where do you go? Uh, where do all these people go? And from the intelligence that I got out of Israel, that the elite and politicians of this world will be hidden in bunkers beneath the earth there. And then after everything calms down, they will be moved. And from what I can gather, the ghost cities of China may be one of the locations that they take the elite. Now, let's say your calculation, or you know what 45 degrees would be. That's pretty well the extreme of what they think the post shift could be. But let's say it's not. Let's say it's 20, 20 degrees, and it ends up somewhere in Canada. Okay, it's still going to change the uh, weather tremendously, and the seas are going to rise. Yes. Uh, the map that John Moore has, and if you get that DVD of the Cincinnati conference, shows you what parts of uh, the world that go underwater from the sea rise. And what's really wild is the FEMA camps that there's 851 FEMA camps for staging of people in America. That's not, I'm not making that up, okay? No. The government even finally admits it. 851 FEMA camps. 848 of them are all inside the area that won't be underwater. Only three are not. So do you think they accidentally put those 848 there or was somebody thinking ahead here? They were definitely thinking ahead. And, and that's another thing, uh, Pastor Paul, the intelligence from Israel uh, has told me uh, the FEMA camps are going to be open after these uh, catastrophic events come. And, of course, I was told, if you're not going to leave the United States, stay away from the FEMA camps. Uh, so, well, okay, now we don't want to leave people in a state of panic here. I mean, the Bible says the Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear, no. but a power, a love, power, and a sound mind. And we don't know if the things we're talking about is the actual uh, wrath of God being poured out. I mean, we could go into the book of Revelation and show you where there's going to be tremendous sorrow and, and things. Or is some of this leading up to it part of the precursor to the coming of Jesus Christ? You know, how far do we go into this? And then again, when is the date of when this is going to happen, okay? People want to know that. So when is that? 
Stephen, uh, there's do we a, there's have a, a date? There's a date on the, on the flash drive, but it's an estimated date. Okay. And <clears throat> if you look at the information there, and of course I have spent hours poring over this information, and, and it's over my head. Uh, quite frankly, he talks about the different astronomers. Uh, he's got phone numbers on there for these, uh, these people that are very well known, uh, including one uh, young lady that's been uh, on the Time magazine. So I don't know. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll be right back with more with Stephen Bendenoon here on The Coming Apocalypse. Released from Cincinnati, a four-part DVD set on the end times. Planet X, Nibiru, The Seas Rising, The Pole Shift, Clyde Lewis, John Moore, Stephen Bendenoon, and myself bringing forth dynamic information relevant to the last day. You can get this four-part DVD set at my website or individually at my Patreon channel. The heavens are shaking. This is a must-see. Get it now. All right, folks, all right. I mean, this is powerful information that we've been sharing here with Stephen Bendenoon. And remember what Amos said. I don't want, don't be afraid, okay? The Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. If you're a born-again believer, you are getting yourself ready to go for the Lord to come and get the bride. But there are certain events that must be revealed to the world. People need to know what's coming. Here's what Amos chapter 3, verse 7 says. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So in prophecy, we're being revealed from the Bible and now with the events going on around the world, the things that are coming. And some of you are watching right now. Listen, we, we mentioned that date of when do they expect this to take place. I, would, I need Stephen to come back next week and to give you that date and to help explain why this is the projected time. But right now, I would love to pray with you. Some of you may want to give your life to Christ. And uh, listen, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know, Lord, I need a Savior. I know, Lord, that I'm not where I should be with you. And I'm, so I'm willing, Lord, to repent of my sins and confess my sins to God and to call upon the name of the Lord and to ask you, Jesus, to come into my life and to wash me with your precious blood and to lift me out of the marry clay of sin and give me the joy of salvation. And I'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Stephen, I don't know where this, with this, we did not have enough time. Will you come back next week? Definitely will come back because, you know, I couldn't say it yet because you're dealing with two different dates in this, okay. uh, this information. And you want to explain that better. Uh, I didn't just want to leave people hanging at the end of the broadcast. No, okay.